Leo, how's the little bitty one doing? What? How's the little girl doing? Sorry, man, yeah. yeah. What, like two weeks old? Ladies and gentlemen, we are live from Escapade 2001 at Imagine Venues in Houston, Texas. This is the Fury Challenger Series. Please welcome to the blue corner for your first fight, Francisco Obato. Fight fans, welcome in. Thank you so much for joining us on a Sunday. I'm Raheel Robsonali, joined by Cody Owens. And a UFC veteran and future champ, Alex Morono. We are excited to bring you this first of its kind broadcast on the UFC Fight Pass Facebook and YouTube channels. Traditionally, you see us on UFC Fight Pass for our awesome cards. But this new Challenger Series, we are pairing up professional fighters with five fights or less who are taking that next step and hopefully one day being a Fury FC champion and making their way to the UFC. So just a cool new card. Can't wait to get this going. And Francisco Obando, our first fighter out, has a 3-2 record. Coming off a win over Kid Lightning, Joseph Aguilar, back in April at Fury FC 60. And he's a guy that has faced Joshua Van. Gabby, uh, uh, Gabby Edgeberry and has beaten Paris Moran, guys. So just to show you what kind of experience he has. Yeah, that win has aged so incredibly well. Um, you know, after he got that victory, he was one of those a pro. He, he was always somebody I looked out for, and he's good. Let's meet his opponent. Let's go inside to Wayne Luggett. Please welcome to the red corner, Cole Griego. I mean, that's all it is, man, the experience, who you're taking on. As you mentioned, that win has aged so nice. Paris Moran, one of the hot prospects in the nation. Cole Griego now, first time in the Fury FC cage. 0-1 record, was supposed to fight for Fury earlier this year. The fight got thrown off because his opponent didn't make weight. Made his pro debut back in August of 2021, where he lost via TKO the second round of Victor Guarrio. Cody, this kid has had 10 amateur fights. Yeah, I saw it. 10 amateur fights. I mean, that's, like I say, about five, six amateur fights. That's a lot. That's a lot of amateur fights. But to have this many amateur fights, this is one of those things where he's in the right place to be at the Challenger Series. He's ready to take the next step, to be able to go to the next level. So barring a victory tonight, we'll see what happens. He may be headed to that next level. Coming from a good gym there, you see Jackson Wink, MMA, obviously one of the more recognized, more famous gyms out there in the MMA community. Uh, you know that he's been training with some solid guys. Unfortunately, he's 0-1, so he didn't get the victory in his first outing. But you know, those type of guys who don't get the victory in the first fight, they come out guns blazing in their second outing. So very excited to see what he's able to do tonight. And you saw our tail of the tape there up for a second. Cole Diego did miss weight by four pounds. Something as a professional you gotta improve on. You can't miss it by that much. You don't wanna miss it, period. Period. But, but missing it by four pounds is something you can definitely clean up as you progress in your career. As you can attest to this, man, it's only half your job. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah. You only have to make weights. Let's go inside for our Ladies official Ladies and gentlemen, your opening main card contest brought to you by Space City Collective is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury FC Phantom Weight Division. Introducing to you first fighting out of the blue corner. Standing 5 feet 9 inches tall, he weighed in officially at 134.5 pounds. Representing Metro Fight Club, he holds a professional record of three wins, two losses. This is Francisco Obando! And introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. Standing 5 feet 8 inches tall, he weighed in at 139.2 pounds. Representing Jackson Week MMA, today he seeks his first professional victory. This is Cole Griego! Your referee in charge of the action, Jeff Rex Road. Time to make some history, gentlemen. First ever fight on our Challenger Series for Fury FC. Jeff Rex, our final instructions. 
Both guys come out. Aggressive. Obando, big body kick right into the takedown against the cage. See, so hitting takedowns this early, you're going to be very powerful. You're going to be dry, so the chance of a sub's not bad, but you're also going to catch the most amount of resistance from your opponent. It's going to use a lot of energy. And Obando is very well-rounded. Obando has traded, you know, wins and losses his whole career. He's looking to put a streak together. He's looking to break that, break that mold. Working hard for this takedown as Obando gets himself around to the back. He's on him. He's glued on him. Yeah, looking to get one hook in, maybe drag him down to get another. Good chin wrestling. Nice yep. little lift on the face there from his opponent. Can't see if he has this. He does have the hands together, which is what you want in that scenario to be able to get that big lift, you know. But we got uh, Cole doing a great job. Ooh. Ooh. Gregor sat down hard on the right hand. Yep. He had a decent little guillotine, but not quite the control he wanted. Ooh. Big punch there from Griego. Yeah, Griego catches that kick, gets Obando down on the ground. Some big heavy shots now. Good, good gambling pound there from Griego. Good, good elbows there. Kind of forearm bashes. Now in this position, would you start to bring and factor in that missing of the weight? He's going to be much heavier, much more powerful in this position due to that not having to cut that weight. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, he packs a big punch. You can tell he's, he's, a, he's a little bit Rather bitter. large frame for a 35-er. Yeah. Nice. In this scenario, you almost want to let the half guard go. You almost want to, like, free up that bottom leg if you're Obando so you can look to catch an underhook and scramble out. Or, or go to, like, a full guard. This half guard Man, is a huge rough spot. Shots from the top of Griego. Good defensive reaction there from Obando. But he was, he was getting hit for sure. Yeah, able to get his back against the cage, trying to work his way up, but Griego doing a very good job of sucking that space back out and trying to get him flat again. Good top pressure from Griego. Man, and I could just relate so much. Like when you're grappling and you're on bottom, you just you gotta be in guard or else you're losing. But in MMA, bottom guard is losing. Yeah. So you almost need to like abandon the connection point on the legs and wrestle up hard. I mean, yes, it takes some energy. Yes, you may have to fend off some punches and subs, but you gotta get your back off the ground. It's way better than the position you're in. Yeah. And, and I tell guys, if you just scramble hard and redline and explode up, it's actually less energy than being ridden out for three or four minutes. Ooh, there's a little up kick up there. Kick. Yeah, we're going to have a timeout for just a second. Funny, all three guys in the cage knew, too. Yeah. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> Obando knew. Griego knew. And the Rex Red knew. Yeah, he knows. Obando knows. He made a little bit of an accident there. Yep. Seems that uh, Griego's going to be okay. Uh, not a significant blow there, but still an illegal blow. Warning issued by Jeff Rex Road. Okay, I was curious if they were going to restart yeah. him on the ground or, or if there was going to be a point. Thankfully, no point. That was unintentional. Hey, I won't give him two, though. You get one. We're back on. Griego looking to get those elbows going. Going back and watching some of Griego's fights. He's had a hard time with wrestlers, but he's been doing a really good job with his work right now. Yeah, Bondo right back in on the shot with him against the cage. I wasn't super um, schooled on Griego's style, but Obando seems to like really want to wrestle this one down fast. obondo has got a good strike. Griego's got a little cut that's opened up over the left eyebrow there. Not sure if that was from a clash of heads or a, a, a quick jab. But it does seem to be that there's a little bit of blood leaking out of that eyebrow now. Good spot. Definitely cut over there. Yeah, it's starting to leak a little more now. Oh, that's but deep. as Griego makes his way oh. to the back. Oh, no, he was, he was under the arm. Never mind. Locking the body triangle up. Full back in trouble. Body lock in tight, as you mentioned, Cody. A couple sneaky elbows he threw there, Raheel. Right on the ear, they're legal. Cole, 
Cole's corner, screaming for him to flatten him out. See if he can get that done and maybe get the arm sunk in for the choke finish. But Obando doing the right things, protecting well. Can we give some props to uh, Cole Griego's tattoo artist, man? Great work on the left side, arm and leg full leg work. Big fan of the leg sleeve. I yeah, think that's, a, leg that's sleeve. a tough look for an MMA fighter specifically. But I'm just a big fan of that type of artwork. It's got to be nice. hours and hours oh, yeah. of work right there as we end round yeah. one. Man, look at that. That is that's some art right there, oh, my yeah. friends. Solid round to open this fight up. I mean, tough guys. We got a little bit of blood drawn over here. Um, I feel like Obando's got to stay off the bottom. He's got to stay out of that crush against the uh, the cage on bottom. He's not having much success getting back to his feet there. So he needs to try to get the striking going in this round. He's shooting from really far away. I mean, really far away. It's giving Rago all sorts of time to punch underhooks and stuff the head. I'm curious what Obando's game plan is, and his corners are going to have their hands full, giving him a, a new game plan, some better advice. He's adamant about that takedown and going for them, but ultimately finding himself on the bottom at the end of those exchanges. So I, I hope that they give him a little bit different guidance in this one. And we don't see the same exact thing happening. And he's uh, using a lot of energy doing yeah, it. You have to be able to adapt, especially with so much experience. You have to be able to adjust your game plan on the fly and realize what you're doing is not working. we got to try something different. There was that uh, up kick that stopped momentarily. The warning was issued and back to the action we went. But it was all Cole Riego just working some excellent ground game. And by the way, that recovery cam brought to you by Renfo, nothing says recovery like Renfo. Check out their full line of recovery products like their heated compression boost massage guns and more at Renfo.com. Be sure to use code FURY for an exclusive 20% off discount. Looks like our cut man got that little cut to close up for the time being. One thing I'm noticing from Greg, I mean, he's throwing everything with 100%. Ooh, big awesome. left hand landed good, as good, you say it. Yes, sir. Good jabs, though, to set it up. Oh, man. We need a bit of a measuring stick in this fight because these guys are just all offense all the time. And it's fun, but it's not sustainable. The flying kick caught with the body into a fall there. <laughs> just, yeah, some more just acrobatics wild. going on. Yeah. And, you know, Abondo needs to take a look at his opponent and see he's bleeding. He's doing some damage. They, they just both seem so eager to, to, to get in and get you know, the exchanges going. I was just thinking that. I was just thinking it's the eagerness and the, both of their energies of just wanting to do something to each other. But instead of strategically focusing that into technique, they're just trying to get at each other, you know? That's, that, maybe that's that explosion of technique that we had there that caused that wild little maneuver. This is the, the problem that face, uh, Obando faced in the first round. Couldn't figure out Grego on the ground, and Cole has just been... Very masterful thus far. Yeah, he's using a good mixture of a little bit of ground and pound, a little bit of elbow, a little bit of hammer fist, a little bit of forearm mushing. Just yeah. staying aggravating there. And then, you know, all the fighters watching, you know, if you're fighting a guy who's 0-1, that doesn't mean they're bad by any means because we've seen a great performance here from Grego. Well, we talked about his extensive amateur career. Ten fights as an amateur, obviously now on to the next level. He lost his pro debuts. Super hungry to show that he's better than that here in the second performance. He's got a his shoulders a little too high over the head for that guillotine. Greg was fighting like the Terminator, just walking yeah, forward walk no matter forward. what. That little hook opening back up again. If yeah. I'm Obando, I'm, I'm seeing damage. And here he goes for the takedown again. But like we right. said previously, oh. Alex, he goes for the takedown, but finds himself in the bottom position at the end of that scramble. I mean, that that could have been the, the one mistake that cost him the most. I mean, he is mounted right now off of his own double leg. With his head shoved against the cage. Yeah. With, a, with a guy bleeding down on top of him, throwing massive elbows. And there's a psychological aspect. You know, I've been tired in, a, in an early fight and shot with no intention to finish, and I'll never do that again. Shooting and failing requires so much more effort than bouncing your, bouncing your feet around in the cage and finding your range. You know, I had one of my amateurs make his debut, and it was a high-paced fight. And going into the second round, in between, I said, hey, this is what it feels like. Like, this is the standard, accept this, embrace this, and understand this is what it's going to be like. So this is how you have to perform. Nice, good reversal there from Obando. Nice reversal there, yeah. Uses the cage to get some space. Ends up with Cole. 
in the bottle position now. He's inside the closed guard. Can he posture up now, Abondo, and do some damage and get that blood flowing some more? So yeah, uh, Cole's cut is right right on like the far end of his left eye. I I've super glued so many cuts like that together yeah. in the gym. It's a pretty safe cut, too. It doesn't go directly into the eye. It kind of runs off the side, even when you're standing up. Just Cole's shooting a triangle. Yeah. Almost got it through. Abondo did a good job swimming that right elbow to the inside. Just looks really gnarly more than anything. It's like you're crying blood out yeah. of that eye. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's what you want fighters to look like at the end of a fight. You got the blood, the cut. We have a, Man, a full don't think you're yeah, We don't have think an anaconda choke right locked now. in. Abondo in a bad position. So and that's why they call he turns it the anaconda for it. choke. Yep. You got to spin. Gotta spin for it like an anaconda. If he gets the back flat, this could be troublesome, but Abondo is able to spin. Real slippery, I would imagine that bloods add, add a little bit more lubrication in the mix there. So over a minute to work here in the second round, I mean. He's right back on Obando's back. Feet crossed, you don't always like that, but he's not really paying attention to it. Like to see the body triangle there. Ooh, Obando is able to nice. spin inside the guard there and then find himself back on top. Good work there from Obando because it looked like with a minute left, there was a world of trouble. Had his back taken. Now raining Abondo down the big elbow. Hits Griego with an elbow of his own now. Here's Follows up with a two, couple three, more. <laughs> Exposes that arm for just a second. Rips out of it. Is able to find himself back inside the closed guard. Good head pressure. Just rubbing the hair, the head all into the, the chin there. Looking to posture and punch. Posture and punch. Oh, that's deep. Ah, he got his arm in. Good, good on Obando, man. His submission defense is on point right now in the closed guard of Cole. 20 seconds left, round two. Man, this has been an eventful yeah. second round. Obando finishing on top. Uh, arguably could have stolen it's the a round. Good look for him in the judges' eyes, for sure. He's got the guy bleeding and he's finishing around on top. I mean, Obando did more damage oh. on top and guard than Cole did on top and mount. Yep. All right. Entertaining second round. Lots of action from both fellas there. Got our. Fury crew busy in there cleaning up some blood in between rounds now. For sure. We look at round two highlights. With Cole Griego to start round two. Looking aggressive. But with a suffocating ground game, but then it all turned. And Obando was the one right here. This could have been a bad moment about a minute 12. Had the back taken, but Obando. Yeah, got he, out of it. He was able to it. slither yeah. his way around and end up in the top position again. Ended up finishing the round out that way. Yeah, Cole had a lot more control time. He did, but Obando definitely did more damage when he was on top. I, I'd give that one a coin toss. So, I mean, if you're Obando's camp, you got to tell him to, to, to get after it. You got to go for it here. You, you got you to gotta win the third, and you probably got to finish. Whereas Cole is still not quite off the hook. He's got to win this round, but he doesn't have to get a finish. That's the difference between the two. Now, when in doubt of winning a round, you just got to give it to the other guy for safety. You can never coast. Absolutely. Yeah, you always assume you lost. If it's close, you assume you lost. You just, I, I lost that one. I got to go out and win this one. A little, little mishap a little there from Abondo. There, yeah. yeah, a little overstep on the, uh, the, the flying kick there. Finds himself on the bottom here again, unfortunately, by his own doing. Yeah, it's that risk-reward there. I know it looks good, and maybe you saw an opening, but now you're back in a position that's been tough all night for you. Yeah, you worked so hard to get out of this position. Oh, it looks like that elbow just opened up a small cut in the same spot. They went cut for cut here. Obando's got the same matching cut on his eyebrow now as uh, Griego. But yeah, Obando's worked so hard to get out of this position and get up and get back on top, and he's had to cr rely on a couple slippery situations to get that position. To go for something so big and drastic like that it just isn't worth it to me at this point of the fight. Yeah, kicks take a lot of energy. Jumping takes a lot of energy. You throw a jumping kick and missed it now, and then being stuck on your back takes the most energy. I mean. By the way, good moment here to mention Renfo. Bringing our fight clock, best-selling health, wellness, and fitness provider Renfo has provided it for over 15 million users worldwide. Use promo code FURY for 20% off at Renfo.com on their scales and massage guns. Familiar picture in the cage now. We've got Griego on the back of Obando. 
Instead, now both men are bleeding. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> and Cutman Joe is definitely going to get his paycheck earned tonight oh, yeah. because, man, those are some good cuts to get us going. Just stand them side by side. And let me yeah. go to work. Look, love to see the before and after as well. Right. We still got three minutes left in this round. There's so much time for Cole to work. Yeah, I'd like to see Obando. He's doing the right thing now. He's, he's decided to go over to the body lock side to try to maybe separate it, get some work instead of just laying on top of him there. That's not really a oh, – nice. there he goes again. As I was going to say, that's not really a, a good position to hang out in, but he's able to slip around and find himself in the top position again. Yeah, that's the third time he's hit that reversal. Yep. And honestly, that, that can be challenging to stop because Cole was doing very well with his back position management. Really throw. savvy work there from Obando. He came alive. He needed it too. I mean, he's he's in the fight. He, he, can, he can win it, but he's, he's got to really put his foot on the gas now. He's trying to work his way to the back here. He's digging for a hook there for a second. Griego denying all entries so far. That's what Obando needed. Right back around. Yep. Got all got the paws on the ground again. He's able to slip that hook in. Grego wearing a little bit of frustration on his face right now. Looking to the corner for some help. Really impressed by Obando's tank here because to have this much energy left and that much power left to do what he's doing right now thus far in round three is definitely a testament to what he's been doing in his fight camp. I think he needs to work on like in-fight decision making. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the fight IQ he's made Correct, some yeah. some tricky plays, but uh, but we what, what we've seen the good things that we've seen of him been great. Same from Cole too. Both yeah. guys have had their moments, but I do feel like there was a lot of unnecessarily wasted energy for sure, mostly from Abanda. And if he can if he can put that energy into a, into a better position, I mean, yeah, some of those resources could have been used for something a little more beneficial. Obando with that three and two record has faced some of the toughest opponents in the weight class already here at Fury FC. Got one minute left in this yeah. round. Been all Obando here for the last few yeah, minutes. Yeah, I mean, really the uh, turn of the tides here. Obando has poured the pressure on. He's been able to land some ground and pound, get back to work since he's got in this top position. Now he's looking for the back to maybe secure some sort of submission finish. See, like there, like that was good fight IQ. Obando did not stay on his back. He made sure to let his hands go in post and get back to his knees so he can continue to, you know, ride out this back exposure. So he's got the skills for it. It's just, we, we need to be a little more tactical. And he's finishing very strong. I mean, Cole could be giving this one up. I mean, there's no, he he won the first. Yeah, 15 seconds left. Obando in the top position. He's been pretty busy here. Cole's just been trying to get up, and it hasn't happened for him. I think maybe riding out to a decision win here. I mean, Obando definitely scored three minutes of control time versus two in this third. I give a third yep. to him. First goes to Cole. The yep. second was very good. Hey, like you said, coin toss. That's a great fight. Very yeah, just I mean, just a testament of the skill level of the fighters that we're putting out here. I mean, like, the judges got it cut out for them, man. Yeah. It's hard to score these rounds. It's hard to score these fights as a whole. You want to lean this way because of this or that or the striking or the takedowns, but it's just so neck and neck. Yeah, and we've seen thus far, I know, for our UFC Fight Pass Facebook and YouTube friends who are joining us, we've had some prelim fights already, and just to kind of give you a background on how the judges have scored that, they, they really value more aggression tonight as opposed to damage, it seems like. So just to keep something in mind, and again, it changes. There's an ebb and flow that goes yep. with it. But this is something that we always like to keep an eye on, like how are the judges scoring that night? Uh, so we'll see how they score it, because we yeah, are going to score cards. I mean, it, it seems like they want to see you working at all facets. Like we saw earlier, the takedown scored, but there wasn't really much done on top in yep. the previous fights. Uh, obviously, lots of work being done by both gentlemen on top position in this fight. So, like I said, man, these two judges got it cut out for them. I would not want to be a judge tonight. And there's like the age-old question, does winning at the end of a round play more than winning in the beginning? In the second round, Obando came alive in the last minute. Yep. So if he catches this decision, then I would say that myth is kind of put to the positive test yeah. that it exists. 
that that kind of last impression type of thing. Yeah, I, 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 I'm a firm believer in that. I think if, if you send the judges with this last seal that you won, that's the last thing they remember, you're more likely to get the nod. All right, fighters in the center of the cage. Jeff Rexroad has him ready. We'll see who wins this fight. Let's go inside to Wayne for the official decision. Ladies and gentlemen, after three rounds of combat, we go to the judges' scorecards for a decision brought to you by Space City Collective. Judge Ryan Thompson scores the fight 29-28 Obando. Judge Joe Soli scores the fight 30-27 Griego. And Judge Patrick Tetla scores the fight 29-28, declaring your winner by split decision, Francisco Obando! Congratulations to Francisco Obando, moves his record to four and two, and finally riding that streak that he wants to put together a few wins. Yeah, fighters watching at home, it was the last part of the second round and the entire third round where he won. I mean, he came from behind. He was tired, he was losing, and he found a way to win the last half of that fight. Congratulations to Obando. He had to dig deep for that one. Good opening fight here on Fury FC Challenger Series. First of its kind card put together by Eric Garcia, Richard Burmaster. Five fights or less as pros. The next wave of talent for Fury on display today on the UFC Fight Pass Facebook and YouTube pages. Thank you so much for joining us. We have five more fights left. And Cody Steele, our main event. I know a lot of fans want to watch Cody Steele take on Brakenden Freeman. That is our main event that is yet to come here at Fury Challenger Series. Let's get going with our next fight. Here's Wayne Leggett for our introduction. Please welcome to the blue corner, <laughs> Jose Lemus. Jose Lemus, second time in the Fury cage. Coming off a loss to Oliver Jimenez at Fury FC 67, a fight that we called Alex just uh, like a month and a half ago. That was a, a like a comeback win for Oliver Jimenez, who had a devastating knockout in his pro debut. But Jose Lima, Lemus wanted to get back in and get some more fights under his belt, so good to see him back here in the bantamweight division. Yeah, man, he was he was fun. He was experienced. Um, not as many wins, as long, or had more losses than wins, but he showed a good skill set. And man, some of these guys who, who want to fight in Fury, they got to earn their keep. He does not have an easy matchup here tonight either in Tony Toro. But I remember, you know, the, the four minutes we saw of him fighting against Ollie was fun to watch. He had a good good skill set. I'm excited to see him fight again. He ate that big jump knee, jumping knee from Oliver. He yeah, say, that was an impressive yeah. victory from Oliver there. But let's see what he's learned. All is good on his end, so he's back inside the cage. And he'll be taking on Tony Toro in just a second, but let's meet him. Here's Wayne Luggett for the introduction. Please welcome to the red corner, Tony Toro. You know, we've talked about pathways to the UFC, right? Alex, you've talked about it on the Fury Unleashed podcast. Like, when you were coming up, there was no pathway. It was just like you kind of get called up or you don't. But the reason I bring that up is for Tony Toro has a pathway. 4-1 and one as an amateur with Fury, now making his debut. And now he knows what to do, right? Win five, six fights get into that next level, maybe get a belt shot after 10, and then get that call up. But this is so important, there's so many Fury fighters that have a pathway from their amateurs until the UFC, and that's what we love to see. Yeah, it's really cool to see. I was just talking to a friend about this the other day. There's a little more pressure, but I mean, it does make it does make for really hardened fighters, you know, come time when they're ready. And I like this Challenger Series idea so much. I was very much so waiting to see Tony Toro fight. He's got some dynamite in his hand. Jose Lemus started his uh, amateur career in 2017, Cody. A guy that you've seen a few times as well. 
his top game is really good. Like, excellent. If he gets on top, he is going to be working you and smothering you. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest brought to you by Renfo is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury FC Bantamweight Division. Introducing to you first, fighting out of the blue corner. Standing five feet six inches tall, he weighed in at 136 pounds. Representing Valco BJJ and Chicago Muay Thai. Today he seeks his first win as a pro. This is Jose Lemus. And introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. Standing five feet six inches tall, he weighed in at a perfect 135 pounds. Representing Gracie Baja in Katy, Texas. Today he makes his professional debut. This is Tony Toro. Toro with a large JJ amount of support in the crowd. JJ Ferraro in there. Final instructions. Cody, as you mentioned, large. Following here for Tony Toro making his professional debut. Yeah, a lot of people excited about that. Katy, Texas, about 25 miles away from where we are here. Imagine venues in Houston, Texas. Big punch there from Toro. Yeah. Tor Toro's got some power in his punches and he's tight. Swings hard, doesn't overswing. Oh! Just as you say, Alex. That might be the beginning of the end there. That's Tony it. Toro! What a debut for Tony Toro! Just as Alex Morono says, about the power in the hands, he lands a massive right hand and finishes the fight. Welcome wow. to the bantamweight division, Tony Toro. The only bad thing about how quick that finish was is now i got to wait another few months to watch him fight. Right, now we got to wait a, wait a while before he does it again. Yeah. What a debut. I mean, you could not ask for a better outcome. That's pretty much exactly how you want it to go. You get out there, you, sh you move, you shake, you throw a heavy punch, it's over. Right, please give Jose Lemus a, 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 better, a better matchup next time. And he's fought two pillars here in the Fury Cage. Wow. Man. Lemus up on his feet, moving around, seem to be perfectly fine. Here's the replay of the entire fight. <laughs> right. Heavy right hand, and then lands the necessary ground and pound to get referee J.J. Farrell to step in and call it. Well, let's make this official. Here's Wayne Leggett. Ladies and gentlemen, referee J.J. Ferraro calls for a stop to the action. 28 seconds into the very first round, declaring your winner by TKO, Tony Toro! I'd be curious to know what the Fury fastest knockout is. That's got to be top five. I mean, it has to be. It has to be up there, yeah, under 30 seconds. That's impressive. Anywhere, any promotion, anywhere. You go in there and you knock someone out under 30 seconds, I mean. It's not easy to do. And if you're an amateur watching around the world, come fight the Fury. <laughs> the Fury amateurs hit a little different, man. Yeah, yeah. Four and one record as an amateur. Comes in, wins his debut in devastating fashion. Tony wow. the Terror Toro. Remember that name. Let's get on to the third fight of this broadcast. Here's Wayne Leggett for an introduction. Please welcome to the blue corner, Jacob Small. Jacob Small, second time inside the Fury cage, coming off a tough loss to Tedrick Macklin back earlier in the summer in New Orleans. No, sorry, that was in, yeah, it was in New Orleans where he lost, because Tedrick also fought in Edinburgh. He's going to be in action here pretty soon as well. Patrick Macklin, a name you should remember. But Jacob Small, a lot of people high on this fighter. A lot of coaches talking to us beforehand that, you know, Jacob Small is a guy that has a really good background. 11 amateur fights, 
brown belt in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu, competes in grappling tournaments. A really aggressive fighter just ran into the buzzsaw that is Tedrick Macklin in his first fight as a professional. So now he gets a chance to showcase it in a catchweight fight at 160 against Josh Wilson, who you'll see in a second. But Alex, Jacob Small trying to make a name for himself here. Yeah, yeah, and I'd say that brown belt and, and the amateur experience, one of the most notable nods in his, in his fighting career. Please welcome to the red corner, Josh Wilson. Josh Wilson. 0-1 record, hasn't fought since 2016. So had a long, a little time long off break there. here. He actually fought his debut at Fury FC 9. Oh, wow. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Dang, I, I may have been on that card. That's yeah. how old that I, is. I, Cody, you, I think you might have. <laughs> That's how old that is. Yeah. Just for perspective, Wow. next week on UFC Fight Pass, we're going to be broadcasting Fury FC 70. That's a lot of shows. Come yeah. a long way. <laughs> a long Come a long way, way man. <laughs> but he did go 4 and 1 as an amateur from 2013 to 2015. Had that long layoff. Back in now. Almost making his debut again is Josh Wilson. Yeah, and the matchup here is pretty much identical. These guys weigh the same. These guys reach is the same. Their height's the same. Everything's basically the same. Same age, everything. So this is a very interesting fight, kind of a, of the same kind of build, same kind of style. I'd like to see who comes out on top. Both fighters in. Let's get our introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, your next fight, brought to you by HKA USA, is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury FC at a catch weight of 160 pounds. Introducing first fighting out of the blue corner. Standing six feet one inch tall, he weighed it officially at 159.8 pounds. Representing Mid-City MMA, today he seeks his first win as a pro. This is Jacob Small. And introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. Standing six feet tall, he weighed in at 161 pounds. Representing Metro Fight Club, Today, he too seeks his first win as a pro. This is Josh Wilson. Your referee in charge of the action, Chet Rexford. All right, red gloves for Jacob, excuse me, blue gloves for Jacob Small, red for Josh Wilson. Wilson comes out with pressure very early. I've already seen two great jabs there from Small. Yeah, uh, keeping uh, that pressure off with that jab. And a good jab goes a long way. Nice jab there from his opponent. Our first round fight. Clock brought to you by Renfo, eye massagers, massage recovery equipment, smart skills, and more. Visit Renfo.com. That's R-E-N-P-H-O.com. Use promo code FURY for 20% off scales and massage guns. Notice in Small, before they got into this clinching situation, Small has a very, very calm demeanor about him. A nice little hop in his step. Kind of Stephen Tom. Thompson-esque, where he just kind of has this little bounce, ready to explode at any second. Nothing's telegraphed. Mm -hmm. I think if we can get some some distance between the fighters here, he's going to show some pretty decent skills on the feet. He's really looking for those trips. And I'll tell you, his opponent, Josh, has done a good job with his balance. Because he was up on one leg there for a little while. Yeah, he hit him on that kickstand, but he was able to stay up. Jacob Small getting a chance to implement his game plan against Tedrick Macklin. Had a really tough time with the pressure that Macklin brings. He's, you know, he's one of the, the brighter prospects. Tedrick Macklin is. He could never just get go, uh, could get it going, uh, Jacob Small, but now has a chance to showcase his full display in Arsenal. By the way, congratulations to Jacob Small. Graduated from the Gretna Police Academy back oh, in September. Congratulations. Really tough job. Good pressure here against the cage from Jacob Small. 
Wilson's done decent defensive wrestling here, but his back's been on the cage the entire time. One thing I, I preach to my guys is like, once you've neutralized the takedown, really put some work in the turn. Yeah, we got to switch positions here. And like, not even necessarily put their back on the cage because some guys just won't allow it. But like, you can turn and take you know open water and then just break off. And, and again, Josh is doing a good job trying to like hit like a, a hard frame underneath the chin. Rex would calls for a break right yeah, there. Doesn't like it. Yeah. The ref, nice right hand there from Josh. His chin's a little high. A little bit there. I was going to say that as well. There's, there's exactly what he wanted. That That's is it. it. Josh that Wilson. It. That does. So the separation, back to the feet, back to the middle to the striking, and Wilson is able to capitalize on that and get the finish pretty quickly. Yeah, and Small was at him, and he was there in that turtle position, but your yeah. hands down, he didn't know where it was. He was in that position, but he was not there, as yeah. you mentioned. Man, what a knockout. Let's look at it. Just that small opening. See if we can show that finish here. Bang right oh. there with the little left hook as he was running in with his chin up high. Pays the price there. Oh, man. And, you know, perfect. His, and his right hand was like up, but not really defending, you know. And that's just, you know, they say hands up, chin down yeah. for a reason. For They've said that for 100 years, you know. That is textbook finding the button. Ate a few punches there. Got his head kind of rattled a little bit. Very, uh, Justifiable stoppage there by the referee for sure. Man, Josh Wilson, what a finish. He's still pumped up in there, punching the pads. He wants to go some more. He's walking our way, and I'm like, hey, I, hey, I don't want any smoke. I'm there's retired, a reason, brother. I there's am a retired. reason I'm back here. There's a catwalk exactly. in between us and the cage. I'm good. We're good. I'm good. Talking about fights is good enough for me. Woo! Man, perfect placement of that hook. Yes, sir. Three fights, two finishes. Can't go wrong with that. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Chef Rex Road calls for a stop to the action. Two minutes, 44 seconds into the very first round. Declaring your winner by TKO, Josh Wilson! Congratulations to Josh Wilson, moves his record now to one and one, gets his first win as a professional, hasn't fought since 2016, but didn't, didn't hey. look like he missed a beat or any years. Dominic Cruz says cage rust isn't real. For those who believe, cool, but I think he just showed tonight it doesn't matter. Please welcome to the blue corner, Kevin Kitts. All right, you ready for some welterweights? Kevin Kent, second time inside the Fury FC cage. He actually opened up the Fury FC 62 main card with a win over Kayla Paul. It was a walk-off knockout. Do you remember that hour? Yeah, he, he was like really stoic and really patient and then just iced the dude, man. Yeah. It was awesome. He's cut off a big layoff. And he comes from the 50-50 gym. Uh, yeah, this guy's a very intriguing fighter, to say the least. He literally just walked it off. He's like, I got this. That was a knockout. I'm done. It was awesome. That was like one of those moments to start a card where you're like, what yeah. just happened? And by the way, if you want more Fury, we will be on UFC Fight Pass next Sunday for Fury FC 70, live from Edinburgh, Texas. And then we're back in action November 6th as well for Fury FC 71. So for those of you watching us on the UFC Fight Pass Facebook or YouTube pages, we have a lot more coming up for you. So make sure you subscribe to UFC Fight Pass. Man, that is an aggressive intro, Please. by the way. <laughs> Alex is loving it. You both love that. Alex was loving that. I think he was singing. And that was actually a little even. That was a little, a little much for you. Tempo for me. <laughs> a little much for you. <laughs> now this, uh, of all of all the pro matchups on this card, this one I do believe was truly like the best prospects with their foot in the door. One and zero versus three and one. Keenan Jackson walking out now. His one loss to uh, Morgan Oriahi, a guy I trained with. 
A guy with a very challenging style, very challenging body type. Very unique fighter. Yeah, and, and Jackson's got a good wrestling base behind him, but but in his opponent, Kevin Kidd, who just made the walk, he's got a strong base as well. I was most intrigued for this match matchup. I thought there were some really good, like the Tony Toro fight was maybe the one I was looking forward to the most because right. of the potential action. But this one, in terms of skill versus skill, prospect versus prospect, this is a big one. And then our main event as well, Cody Steele 1-0 is fighting guys making his debut. So we're not yeah. too sure how he's done as a pro. Whereas this one, both guys already got some wins. Keenan Jackson, second time in the Fury cage. As you mentioned, he did take on Morgan Oriahi. He lost that fight. And you know, it's funny talking to a few people before that fight, you're like, man, Keenan could just never get it going in that fight. But as you mentioned, Cody, and as you've mentioned as well, Alex, Morgan's one of those fighters that his style is so yeah. unique and so hard to implement a game plan, so maybe we'll see a different key yeah, The yoga is. flame, he's, yeah. good, he's pretty good everywhere. He's got a good triangle game on the bottom in jiu-jitsu, but he's also a very unique, unorthodox striker. So, tough challenge. Our tail of the tape for this welterweight division brought to you by Sheath Underwear. I hope you got a chance to look at it because that was on really quick and off really quick. <laughs> boom, boom, there it goes. Here, here they are. There they go. Just to let you know, both guys did make weight, okay? Yeah. For this welterweight showdown. Keenan Jackson serves in the U.S. Air Force. Actually was on deployment for a while. Had to take a little break from fighting. So he's a, he's a great dude. Yeah, thank, thank you, you for your service. service. Ah, My man. My man, you got to say it. You have to, you have to. I've got military family, got military people close to me, so always appreciative of the people who go out there and put their lives on the line for that. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest brought to you by Space City Collective is scheduled for three rounds of the Fury FC Welter Late Division. Introducing first fighting out of the blue corner. Standing five feet, 11 inches tall, he weighed in at 168 pounds. Representing 50-50, he holds a professional record of one win, no losses. This is Kevin Kent. And introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. Sitting five feet four, he's not five four, but five ten, five eleven. He weighed in at 171 pounds. Representing Jackson Week MMA, he holds a professional record of three wins, only one defeat. This is Keenan Jackson. Your referee in charge of the action, JJ Ferraro. No way he's by four. <laughs> no. Hey, sometimes you have a little error. All right, no big deal. Maybe it was supposed to be a yeah. nine, not a four. Yeah, probably five and nine. <laughs> I'd still put him taller than yeah, that. Yeah, I would too. <laughs> so no secret, Jackson's got the wrestling pedigree. Um, but Kent has some fantastic grapplers in his training camp. Yeah, coming from 50-50, Ryan Hall's gym. A lot of creative grapplers there, unique styles all, all around. So I just never know what he's going to bring. I remember the patience of Kent, and he will throw that left hand very straight. If he got a good left kick. He does have the open stance. By the way, our first round fight clock brought to you by Renfo. Go to Renfo.com. Use promo code FURY for 20% off. Ooh, a big kick there. 20% off there. The Number one Amazon best-selling digital scale. Renfo.com. Use promo code FURY right now. 20% off. Yeah, you got to be careful kicking at wrestlers because yep. all they have to do is put one hand on that leg and then run forward and yeah. you're down. And you're down on your back. I've, just, I've had a lot of fight camps against wrestlers. I think that's my, my, my boxing and MMA is my primary because mm -hmm. I've always had to rely on it. It's just too dangerous. And, you know, is landing a low kick worth the risk of getting takedown or taken down? I'd say not. Yeah, the, the low kick, especially that low ankle calf area kick a lot of people will throw is really like an investment into the piggy bank. It's the long game that tends to add up over the fight. Oh, wow, I'm a plata. Very he rarely finished over. in MMA, but using it to get a better position for sure. So Kent, I mean, uh, this is tough, especially with Keenan sprawling on him and hanging on him. So you saw Kent chose yeah. to go back in the half guard, opposed to standing back up. Yeah, had that opportunity, could have maybe slipped out. 
you know, Keenan Jackson did a, so a, strong on top. He did, he did a great job locking up that mm -hmm. shoulder, but, but Keenan just instantly stepped over. Yep. Good sweep attempt from Kent. Well, giving the backup in the process, though. This is where Keenan is so good using that strength. Yeah, looking to flatten them out here, potentially get the, the body all the way in the ground. You can land a few good punches if you do that. It's a good, good way to open the neck up to get to the, the choke, as he's doing now. Yep. Ooh, that oh, that right arm is in deep. <laughs> I, we're going to see a tap here Just for about sure. done, yes, this sir. This is going to be it. Extending with the hips. It looks like this is going to be it. Here it comes. Or he might just wow, go Wow, that is it. He's he out. is actually knocked out. Yeah. That, that was did. it. He could not do anything. Decided that to go out on his shield. Yep. Oh, he is just getting out of it right now. Yeah, we don't need the camera on that right now. Yeah, he's back with us. No worries. Oh, man. What a finish there from Keenan Jackson. Kevin Kent still down right now. You know, and, and Kent actually, you know, he went for the Laplata, tried to swing. He, he went for the half guard strip, and it looked pretty good. But man, Jackson was just all over, and he had the right answer to all of those moves. Some more secure than others. But man, yeah. once Jackson had that back, he, he knew exactly what to do. Yep. Just cinched in that choke. It was over the chin. He figure four that got him behind the head, and then slipped under, and that was it. I think Keenan knew too. That was a wrap. Yep. Put a good squeeze on. There was no tap. Decided to go out on the shield. Uh, sometimes, sometimes you know, it look, be that way. Yeah, you want to go out of the shield, but at some point you got to realize that, okay, I'm probably not getting out of this. Don't yep. want to. Kent back up on the stool now. Yeah. Talking to the doctor, realizing what has happened. A little frustrated, but it's part of the game. It's all good going to shake his opponent's hand now. Keenan Jackson moves this record to 4-1 and one now. Huge win for Keenan Jackson. Riding that loss against... Morgan. Let's make this official. Here is Wayne Leggett. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes two minutes, 30 seconds into the very first round. Declaring your winner by submission due to a rear naked choke, Keenan Jackson. Nice tap there from Keenan Jackson. Man, we are flying through this card. Thank you, everyone, for joining us. If you're watching on the UFC Fight Pass's Facebook or YouTube channel, I'm Raheel Ramzanali with Cody Owens and UFC veteran Alex Morono. Fury is back next Sunday as we get Fury FC 70 going and November 6th, Fury FC 71. Subscribe to UFC Fight Pass for exclusive content and Fury FC broadcast. Time we head to our co-main event, gentlemen. Got a good one coming up here, fellas. Please welcome to the blue corner, Jason Rivera. Jason Rivera. 0-3 record. Fighting out of... 10th Planet in Austin. Now, hasn't fought since 2014. So, almost we, making that debut again. We saw a few fights ago, or a couple fights ago, rather, that the, the, the cage rust, the ring rust, may not be a factor for some people. And from the looks of it, man, he's very comfortable. He's in his element, walking out, singing his song. That's, that's a good vibe. That's a good feeling to have. He's got former UFC fighter Andrew Craig in this corner, who I know knows the keys to victory inside the cage. So, I'd like to see how he performs tonight. He's definitely coming out with some Austin, Texas vibes. I like it. Yeah, for sure. Shout out to Austin, Texas, Hook of Horns. My, my university, my alma mater. Tough loss to Oklahoma State yesterday. Ouch. <laughs> Love what 10th Planet is building out there, by the way, in Austin. A really, really good scene over there. Jason Rivera inside the cage, so let's meet his opponent. 
Dexter Sign. You hear this? Yeah. He's good, man. 3 and 0. I mean, I like how Jason is having some fun walking out, but he has got his hands full tonight. You are Hector absolutely Sines. correct with that, Alex. Hector Signs, Houston's own 3 and 0 record as you mentioned, Alex, four times inside the Fury cage. Eight times as in general also had five fights as an amateur in Fury. So again, just showing you that pathway that we keep talking about. We see our tail of the tape brought to you by Bump Box. The reach advantage for Jason Rivera and the height advantage. Both guys did make weight for this lightweight showdown. 37-year-old Jason Rivera taking on one of the hotter prospects in Houston, Hector Sines. I believe that does make him the oldest fighter on the card tonight. We had that 36-year-old way earlier on the prelims. Yep. 37 years old, still able to make weight, still able to do the necessary things to come out here and fight. We've had a 40-year-old in the in the case, Nick Compton. Yeah, 40. A, a guy uh, we've been calling his fights here for the last few months. He's made his way to Fury. AJ, nothing but a number here at That's Fury. It. You got skills, you'll be on. Let's get our official introductions. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest brought to you by Kim Laura Tattoo Company in Conroe, Texas. Is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury FC lightweight division. Introducing first, Heidi out of the blue corner. Sitting five feet ten inches tall, he weighed in officially at 154.8 pounds. Representing 10th Planet in Austin, Texas. Tonight, he seeks victory number two as a pro. This is Jason Rivera! Introducing his opponent across the cage, fighting out of the red corner. Standing 5 feet 8 inches tall, he weighed in officially at 154.4 pounds. Representing the Four Rounds Fight Club in Factory X, he holds a perfect professional record of three wins, no losses. This is Hector Sons! Your referee in charge of the action, Jeff. Rex Road. Co-main event time. You hear that pro Houston crowd. We are here in Houston live from Imagine Venues. Thank you for joining us on this Sunday. Jeff Rex Road has the guys going glove touch there. Beautiful mustache, by the way, by Jason Rivera. Absolutely. First round fight clock brought to you by Renfo. Uh, got a little stoppage, a little wardrobe uh, a little, malfunction there. A gotta premature those, start. <laughs> tuck those strings in. Hey, I'm not ashamed to say it. <laughs> Everyone has issues, all right? Make sure you get checked out. Nothing to, shame, nothing to be ashamed of. First round fight clock brought to you by Renfo. Shop now at Renfo.com with code FURY for 20% off. Plus free shipping on their award-winning smart scale and massage guns. Purchase right now during the FURY FC broadcast. Get 20% off. Renfo.com. Use promo code FURY. Okay, I think we're underway for real this time. Southpaw versus Southpaw. Not often seen. Ooh, big kick there from Rivera. Ooh, a crescent nice kick. little crescent kick. Yeah. You, you see that there, Morano. Not a, a common kick that you see. Usually traditional martial artists have that in the uh, in the arsenal there, but that was a really unique kick. Oh! oh! Rivera eats a big left hand there from Sines, puts him down. Sines able to get on top now. We call that the change up, man. That was a beautifully thrown, just laser beam straight left hand. Absolutely. Rivera reacted well, considering how flush that punch landed. I mean, he yeah. was, was kind of with it before he hit the ground. Working to get back to a guard pretty quickly, and Rivera's he's looking to lock up a triangle here, is Rivera. Sign's got his arm in, though, pretty quick. Yeah, opposite side over there. Good stack there from Signs. Like arms out, I mean. Rivera, he, he's a little stacked up. He's got to cut an he's angle. He's pressuring. Looks like he's trying to cut this angle with the foot on the hip there, but having a hard time with this pressure from Signs. Yeah, Rivera's got to, like, shoulder walk back. It's tough. you got to create space and mm -hmm. continue to kill the posture. Like, he's got to be hanging on Signs' head right now. He's going to bail on it. It's a good stack there from Signs, I and mean, he, he was in the danger zone. Rivera able to recover his full guard again. Pressure now from Hector Signs. Oh. 
We saw him take control in his last fight against Solomon Amadeo. Got Solomon into the ground, and that was pretty much it. Tapped him in the first round with that head arm choke. Yeah, Sainz had a beautiful triangle arm bar. I think on his second fight, maybe his debut, but I mean, the guy's got, he's very well rounded. I mean, you saw that awesome kind of, you know, hands down, floating out of range, and then spiking and then that bam, straight left in, yeah. getting the drop. Got more submission wins than knockout finishes. So just to show how well rounded he is. And I've been impressed by Rivera. I mean, he reacted to that shot while he's setting up another triangle, signs postures up. Yeah, he had that wrist control looking to send it through the center there as Signs was looking to pass and walk into a triangle. But as you say, yeah, Rivera doing a good job on the bottom there. That 10th Planet Jiu Jitsu seemed to be saving him from getting his guard passed and ending up in a much worse ground and pound scenario. It's just kind of staying, hanging on, staying safe in this situation, looking to throw the guard up here and there and maybe hopefully catch one of these submissions sometime soon. Posture control right now with the arms over the top from Rivera. Punch from the top there, four signs. Yeah, signs doing a great job with the head pressure too, keeping that head right in the chin of Rivera. Driving him a little closer, a little closer to the fence each time. Bunch of heavy right hands. That was good ground the pound. Back to the feet is Rivera. Rivera noticeably had some discomfort on his head. Uh, probably from some of that ground and pound. Yeah, probably a couple of lumps on there. <laughs> Crowd going crazy for Hector Signs. One minute left in round one. Yeah, I think yeah. Sainz needs to just stick to his straight punches. He's looking for jump knees. Yeah. But he's having the most success just coming straight down center line. His movement allows his head to get off. Ooh. Nice little spinning wheel kick. Through that in short distance too, that was beautiful. Right there, nice little double jab read. Maybe throw that lead hook into that straight left. Rivera needs to throw something. Yeah, he needs to throw something to get that pressure from signs off of him for just a moment. He needs a second to reset. There's a lot, a lot of heavy pressure there. Just, just the movement alone was going to wear Rivera out. Just to mention a little short shoulder shot there from signs. I love seeing that. Half-hearted Haragoshi there from signs, almost countered. All right. <laughs> hey, good first round there. Fun first round. It's yeah. been a while since the first round has come to a finish right, here. Like, hey, three straight finishes. They're in the going first to round. the stools now. Yeah. Yeah, a lot, a lot going on there for sure. I think Signs able to get the pressure, consistently pushing forward, being on top, heavy on top. Uh, Rivera on bottom, looking like he's comfortable on bottom, but he's not wanting to be there, obviously. Throwing up some triangles here and there when he could. But Sainz is doing what he had to do to stay on top there and uh, grind out that round. That jumping knee just misses there from Hector Sainz. That wheel kick. Yeah, yeah, that was nice. Good end to the round there for Rivera. Try to come on there just a little bit late. Rivera, big smile on his face, thumbs up. He's ready to go. Round two, glove touch. Rivera's Three. shown some really good pop in his kicks in that first round. He only landed two, but they were strong. Good combo to open up for Rivera in the blue gloves, red for Signs. And Signs throwing a heavy overhand right there as he stepped in. There we go. Good, just disciplined striking from Signs. Finds a little success. I wonder if they saw something when looking at Rivera's fights. I mean, it's been a while since he's fought since 2014, but he's been throwing that jump knee. Yeah. After that combo, second time we've a few seen times it. now. Yeah. Well, I, I think what it is is Signs' movement's pretty elusive, 
and Rivera is taking the back foot. So Science has a lot of room to figure out how to jump and switch his hips. I think it's more of like an opportunistic thing opposed to a style thing. I guarantee you if Rivera starts marching forward, he's gonna see a lot, we're gonna see a lot less flying knees. Yeah. A bit of a cut on Rivera now. Oh, a nice oh. high kick there from Signs. Good high guard there from Rivera. Slapped him with the toes there. Ooh, Rivera <laughs> looks to throw one of his own. A nice body shot there from Signs. Looks for the knee again, it, as Raheel mentioned. It, if I'm his coach, as I'm saying, stop to cut yeah. that flying knee out. Touch him first. At least get him hurt if you, before you throw it. Hector's corner calling for those combos they've been working on. Open up the hands a little bit. misses walking down Rivera is signs yeah whatever Rivera throws he's throwing it well he's not throwing it a lot not throwing a lot yeah it's not enough volume there a little recovery clinch there from Rivera a couple deep breaths then we'll get going again here in a second yeah, I'd like to see the striking output of Rivera pick up a bit. Ooh, good knee there from Rivera. Snuck that little knee in there. Made signs stand up a little taller. You know, it's funny, Rivera was rubbing the back of his head earlier in, in that first round, and that sometimes if, if your head grinds against the, the, the chain link in the cage. A oh, nice swing back elbow for there from Signs. But that can really, really not like feel great either. Grater sometimes. I, do, I remember I've had numerous times where I've had my back just all bruised up. I'm like, what is that from? And it's just from <laughs> having your back against the cage just getting eaten up. Signs is Although doing good damage here coming years. forward. You can Ooh. still feel it. Ooh. Oh! oh! Oh, yeah, the yeah, ref didn't Rivera, call it. yeah, there was yeah. no stoppage there for Rivera. The, ref, the ref did not say yeah. anything. Rivera thought he could just walk off on his own personal foul call. Sign said, absolutely not. I'm getting my punches yeah, in. Protect yourself at all times until the referee stops the yeah. action. And, and no knock but, on signs for doing that either. Correct, yeah. You, Is you, there a cut there now on Hector Signs' nose? If you guys can. I can't see it anymore, but there is blood. It does look out. like there's some blood. Yeah, from Hector Signs. That's coming out of Signs now. You see it dripping on to the foot of Rivera right now. Although Rivera is bleeding himself, but I don't think that much. Yeah, I don't think it was Rivera's blood. It looked like right on the bridge of the nose, there was a cut. Let's we'll see if we can get a reverse angle here in just a second. Good so foot, foot stomp stomps. there. Love seeing those. Big fan of the foot stomp. A little throwback action. Big knee there from Rivera. Oh, yeah, if you look at the feet of the fighters, someone's bleeding for sure. Yeah. It's a good call there, Raheel. Curious to see what the damage is. It, it definitely happened in that exchange, but I don't know how Signs got the big cut. Maybe just a... Maybe from a head, knee earlier yeah. or a clash of heads. Or, so, maybe, maybe we could get the, the truck to pull up a replay of the, the cut there. Rivera did hit that little crafty over underneath <laughs> earlier in the round. Ten seconds left, round two. That was, was the same knee. Again. Yeah, I landed a couple of those now. Don't forget, fighters, until the referee says time for a foul, don't assume it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, got a pretty good one right there in the... Uh, kind of like the nearest tear yeah, duct almost. Yeah, right? inside the eye, like eyebrow, eye area. That's just not a great spot for Not a at all. This recovery cam brought to you by Renfo. Check out their full line of recovery products like their heated compression boots, massage guns, and more at Renfo.com. Be sure to use code FURY for an inclusive 20% off discount off their award-winning digital scale and massage gun. You look at round two highlights. There was that really crafty combo from Stein. See if maybe we can get that exchange. Maybe this is it here. No, not what. Not 
quite sure when the nose got busted of signs, but ultimately lots of blood leaking. Looks like a cut right above the nose, the eyebrow area. But our cut man seems to have stopped it for now, and this fight will continue. Yeah, they did a good job because it's not bleeding at all, and that cuts in a, a sus spot. Sus. Yeah, cut man Joe doing a great job. Best in the business. Oh, man, that one is definitely going to be a stop. Yeah, big reaction from that one. Referee calls stop to the action but for toe winger. So pretty funny. We were talking about how rough the Cup cage shot. link can be. We had a really old rickety ring in my first gym. So you could like rebound off the ropes like WWE style. <laughs> so I would often like, you know, put my back on the ropes. Guys, into the punches, I would like lean back, make a miss and then counter them. And I made my pro t kickboxing debut. And those ropes were so tight. Couldn't I leave. tried that in the fight and I didn't move an inch and almost got cracked. And I was like, okay, no more of that. Man, no that more was, leading. That cup check. Ooh, ugh. By the way, in yeah, our prelims, we had such a devastating low blow connection that the fighter had to be stretchered, stretchered out. out. Stretchered out to the hospital. hospital. Yeah. Yeah. Man, so Yikes. I have uh, I've participated in, I have been cage side for, and now I have called on the commentary numerous fights over my career and I have never seen anyone until tonight go to the hospital for a cup check for a growing shot. There was a, I had watched the fight, it was two heavyweights and one guy was standing, the other guy was on bottom and he threw an axe kick to the body but missed. Ooh. Hit him in the cup, broke his pelvis bone. Oh wow, you said these are heavyweights. Heavyweights. Wow. Imagine a heavyweight heel strike. Nope. Nope thank just, you. Will just cut me right in half. Dude. Hard, hard pass. Props to the doctor, he's getting yeah. in there. Oh yeah. He's getting in there. He's checking them out. By the way, we'll be back on UFC Fight Pass next Sunday for Fury FC 70 as we head to Edinburgh, Texas, and then Fury FC 71 oh, back wow. here in Houston. And this is going to be a medical stoppage, it looks like. Yeah, I could see the referee as he called the stoppage. He mouthed a couple times. It's bad. It's bad. Second one of the night, gentlemen. Low uh, blow, I, I believe, lightning struck yeah, twice. Yeah, I, I believe he said that his uh, his man part had gone uh, up into his body. Oh. Yeah, I mean, the ref definitely, he's, he's telling the commission something. He, he, told, know. he told Hector something. He's like, hey, man, like, it's not, not like bad. It's, it's not like they're just calling it because he's faking in pain. Like, hey, he's so going to. So this is interesting. What's happening is they're asking, can they have enough fight time happen to make they a can decision just go to the judge's scorecard? Yeah. And, and I believe so. I believe. I, I think it's after is. after uh, three minutes in the second round, I believe, or something like that. There's enough fight time has been accumulated to render a decision off of the performance so far. So weird. I believe. Don't uh, don't quote me on that, but I believe it's something along those lines. All right. So we'll see how this one is officially ruled in a second. Yeah, well, they're taking him out. Could be a medical stoppage. Uh, it looks like we're probably going to have another fighter leave. Due to a uh, Man. low blow. This Hector Science crowd is not happy with what they just saw, but look. Hey, man. It, a, no, Nobody knows yeah. but the fighter what exactly is happening right yeah. now or how he feels, you know. So they are trying. We have, yeah, they, so what's the, happening right now is his corner. They are trying to figure out, is there enough fight time? And as you've already mentioned, Cody, there should be, but let's see how they score this. We'll get Wayne Leggett inside the cage in just a second. And what happens in this situation is they will just go to the, the judges' scorecards as they sit right now, and that will determine the, the winner of the fight. All right, here's Wayne. Ladies and gentlemen, the end comes 13 seconds into the third and final round. Your winner by TKO, Hector Sainz. Okay, so enough fight time accumulated. They took it to a TKO. We'll have to maybe get some clarification on that. But ultimately, I believe enough fight time had accumulated where they were able to render a decision. This was considered a technical knockout, though, which, so I mean, what, what do you think about that? I, I'm confused, Alex. So Can it be a TKO? Due to a uh, foul shot. I mean, it was, so yeah. it was, a, it was a, an, an accidental illegal strike. 
Well, we think it was. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I mean, you know yeah. what? I'd be, I'm just to learn. I'm gonna ask the commission yeah. a little bit later. So now, but we do have our main event. This is a fun fight. I mean, even two for three. Come on. Here we go. <laughs> All right. So we'll yeah we'll get a ruling here from the commission in just a second because I am. I'm absolutely confused, Cody. I, I don't know. Yeah, let me. I want to try to see if I can get yeah, why don't you some clarification yeah. on that real quick. While you, while you do that, here is Brakenden Freeman. Quite the extensive amateur career. I mean, he's got, I mean, the toughest debut you can hope for, honestly. I mean, if I'm, you know, other than guys like Bo Nickel, their debut. But I mean, Freeman's good, though. You know, Cody Cody steals his opponent. Cody still want to know he's a pro. Freeman's solid. Making his debut, as you mentioned, 5-0 and as an amateur. Three out of those five fights were finishes. Hasn't fought since October of last year, so had that little break between his amateur career and now making his professional debut. So my strike coach, Matt Wald, got to give him all the credit, man. He is just a studying master. He, he, you know, he was just curious. He was curious for the matchup. He found some, uh, some info on Freeman, said he's very, very aggressive. He's big for the weight class. And if you guys don't know his opponent, Cody Steele, Cody Steele's got some high, high-level jujitsu and wrestling. I would not be surprised to see Cody try to get this one to the ground early to try to, you know, quell some of the aggression of Freeman, because Freeman starts hot. It's yep. crazy. He's a big 55 or two. He's got a big frame for the for the weight class. Our partner's joining us back. All right, Cody's going to have a, a little update here for us. So what? Okay. Was the, yeah. What so happened? clarification from the state: due to it being an accidental foul, the fighter is given enough time to be able to continue. If the fighter decides they are unable to continue, then they will go on to lose by technical knockout. Gotcha. All right, here we go. Let's meet his opponent. Please welcome to the right corner. Cody Steele, second time here as a pro inside the Fury cage, had a devastating knockout of Keith Ford in his final amateur fight. Like that was one of those knockouts you go, wow, like that was nasty, right? Followed up by winning his pro fight debut, or pro debut, and then went on a hiatus, had a knee injury he's been dealing with, all good now. Regroup, decorated Brazilian, Brazilian jiu-jitsu player. But he's more than that. I mean, he is an all-around fighter. Yeah, his wrestling's rock solid. He did um, represent Fury in the uh, the quads team submission only matches correct. last December. I was actually team captain on the team. I had to pull out due to uh, due to some COVID mishaps, yeah. which was surprising to everybody. But I know Pineda took his reign and ended up getting second place only by decision. Yep. No subs. They did a yep. fantastic job. Cody Steele was the smallest of the competitors, and man, did he hold his own. He's, yeah. he's good. Uh, and, and as good as his striking is, Freeman, his opponent, he's, he comes out hot, and he's got some great striking. He's got a winner over a guy named Tater McSpadden, who is Oklahoma kickboxing champion. So I think it would be wise for Cody to utilize that ground game, at least early on in this fight. At that tough debut fight against Jesse Gangler, we're looking at our tail of the tape brought to you by Renfo. Use promo code FURY at Renfo.com for 20% off their massagers, massage guns and digital weight scales. The 27-year-old Cody Steele, 6-1 height advantage there for Brayton Freeman. It has a bit of a height advantage, but it says the reach is the same, yep. which is always unique to see. Cody Steele also training with uh, Bang Chow Muay Thai in Thailand, getting ready for this fight. Spent, sent, spent six weeks out there, sharpening up that stand-up. Well, it's main event time, so let's get this going. Here is Wayne Leggett. Ladies and gentlemen, the following contest brought to you by the Fury Unleashed podcast, available on Apple, Spotify, and YouTube, is scheduled for three rounds in the Fury FC lightweight division, and it is your main This fight is sanctioned by the Texas Department of Licensing and Regulation. Your judges at cage side, Ryan Thompson, Patrick Petlon, and Professor Joe Solis. And now, Houston, Texas, make some noise because the time for talk is over. It's time 
Just about ready to go here. First Maybe ever main event on the first ever Fury FC Challenger Series. Freeman, Steele. Nice kick to open it up from Freeman. Thanks and thanks a lot there from Freeman. Getting the legs involved, hip switches. Yeah, Cody brings that wrestling power into his striking. And he hits hard. I mean, you guys saw the last knockout he had as an amateur. If Freeman keeps a strange pace, his, his timing is different. He's a hard guy to, st to train for. Yeah, throws a lot of stuff just to get you to react. And you can see, I mean, I don't know, I can't tell if Cody's waiting to shoot or throw that right hand, but he's loading up. Looks like his right hand is pretty loaded. And just as I say, proves me wrong, goes for the takedown. If Cody can confirm back control, I mean, that would be truly worst case for Freeman here. Freeman it's did a good dump. job squaring up. Got a good arm drag situation working his way back up. Is Freeman. But Steele just so sticky on him. Nice little body shot there from Freeman. Center of the cage we go. A little striking here from Cody Steele. Nice right hand landed. Gave him a beautiful setup to that shot. You know, and then, and then defending that initial takedown for Freeman's got to be a, a small victory. But, you know, even as a, as a commentator and fan, I, you know, I, I did see Cody's wrestling and grappling ability, you know, very much so levels ahead of Freeman's. You know, could Freeman stop the takedown? And so far, he has been able to. I mean, yeah, kind of a victory fight. in itself. Yeah. But with Steel, you, just, you don't have to worry about just the wrestling, and his striking is equally as dynamic and explosive. Slip there. And Steel just dives in for the takedown. He's able to get the big lift, return back to the mat. Freeman can't risk exposing his back on a get up. Yeah, as you stated earlier, if Steele could get to that back, it might be all but over. Halfway mark, first round. Fight clock brought to you by Renfo. Go to Renfo.com. Use promo code FURY for 20% off their award winning digital scales and massage guns. Renfo.com. Best seller of health and wellness innovations. Yeah, Steele looking to step over, get into a half guard now. Trying to pass over to get to full mount. This half guard's a good ground pound position. Locked in place there. Able to do a lot of damage from this top position is steel. Yeah, half guard on top is so good because you can control the hips of the bottom man. You can control the hips with your legs. Whereas from side control, you really got to use your, you know, your whole body. It can be a little more challenging from half guard to posture and punch. Going for that back control is Cody Steele. This is what Freeman needed to uh, really try to avoid. I mean, in every fight, but especially against a guy with a, with a resume like yeah, Steele. this type of pedigree of grappling, for sure. Freeman good. does. Yeah, he st stood back up. That was good for uh, Freeman. Could have been a dangerous moment there with the minute 30 left. 
but back up to the feet. You know, I, I had a fight once where I fought a really just strong grappler, and it, and it doesn't matter if you know what they're going to do. What matters is can you stop it? And, you know, and, and here Freeman's actually having some success. By the way, shout out to HKA USA, providers of the Fury Gloves, you see. New sponsor, shout out to them. Yeah, I got to say, I was, you know, I put some gloves on my amateurs before mm -hmm. the fight started. Man, they are nice. I even talked yeah. to my striking coach about how nice the gloves were. I really like how they're colored as well to represent the yes. corner. Yeah. That's yes. really cool. It's not just a typical black glove with the tape you always see on the, the wrist. Just definitely can tell who's in what corner. Oof. A little slip Still, on the yeah, knee goes there. for the knee, but a little yeah. slip. A lot of sidekicks there from Freeman. Nice body Ooh, shot. That hurt him. That hurt him. Yep. That hurt him bad. Steele has Freeman stunned. And now he's rocked too. A couple too. more big shots there was landed. Yes, sir. In that defensive circling position. Ten seconds left in the round. Can he make it out? Absolutely. Man, what a finish to the first round of our main event here at Fury Challenger Series. So the liver sits on the right side of everyone's body. Yes, sir. So when you're a southpaw fighter, yes, you're a little less, you know, it's, it's harder to get a beat on them because their stance is different, but they do carry that liver on the front side of their body. So that straight right or that right hook from an orthodox fighter can damage it. You saw Cody Steele just, really, like, yeah. just, just really torqued into that big just right hook. And for anyone who has been or for those who have not been hit in the liver with that type of intensity, it's just a, debil a debilitating shot. It essentially paralyzes you or just freezes everything up and you see everything coming at you, but you're not able to return. You're not able to do anything about it. So yeah, it could be a, a fight ender for sure. There's a nerve that runs through your liver too, and it actually is responsible for a lot of your motor, re your motor reflexes too. I there watched a go. really cool video online recently about it. And if it gets hit hard enough, it'll shut down that It's like aspect. a switch, yeah, it just turns everything off. Unfortunately, I know what that feels like. <laughs> it's not fun. All right, round two, by the way, this fight scheduled for three rounds. Ooh, big body kick to begin by, by Freeman there. Steele returns right back. Oh! Ooh, big left hand by Cody Steele. So Freeman was mid-jump when he got hit with that hook. So it, I mean, it, it dropped, and it looked bad, and it was bad. But he was also not grounded, so it, it, made yeah, it, it was gave it some fanfare. Mid-flight, yeah. And you got Cody and Mount all Cody. hot and bothered, looking right. to do some damage. Pouncing on top, saw that opening, did deliver a big right there as well from the top, and now trying to, to land work some that elbows. game from the top. Big punches coming in from Cody Steele. Nice knee to the body there from Cody. Uh, Freeman's flattened out and just covering up. I mean. There we go, good post. He didn't post that, Earth was taking a close look. Yeah, Rex Road was leaning in a little bit there. And Cody starts raining in some shots, make Jeff decide if this is gonna be enough or not. Oh, he's got the wrist right on that far end too, and the yeah, way to kill the wrist right is to go flat. belly down, but you risk its back exposure. That wrist right is a catch 22. Yeah, Cody's jumped over to the back now, looking to get the both hooks in. Right one Cont in. Yeah. Content to ground and pound, though. Man, let's see if Cody Steele can finish this fight. I think he's sinking the choke in now. I think it's under the okay. chin. It looks like we're going to have a tap soon. There yeah, it is. That is it. That is Good it. Cody, Cody Steele. Steel. Takes him to 2 0. He gets the first finish of his pro career. And his debut was no easy feat. The guy fought in over 10 fights. And, and he beat him everywhere. Just, he, really, he was talking to me yesterday. He really wanted to finish and couldn't quite find it. But man, he didn't have much easier of a matchup here in Freeman. Freeman had a lot of very unique, different qualities you had to try to troubleshoot. It took Cody around to do it. Yeah, but very unorthodox. Yeah. Hurt him with the body shot and then found his takedown after dropping him with that punch, that aerial punch. Right, yeah. So made his way to his back and just, just did not let up. What was impressive was it was the striking that set up that uh, potential finish, and he did get the finish there, of course, with the tap. But man, that was beautiful work from Cody Steele. Moves his record to 2 and 0. Oh, and I hope we get the chance to see Brandon Freeman here in Fury a lot more as well as he made his debut. 
fun, fun way to yeah, get our, fight, our main event. He's such an exciting fighter to watch. You know, win, lose, or draw, that's the type of fighter people love to come and show up and, and see. Very exciting all over the place. Look forward to him in the future. Let's make this official. Ladies and gentlemen, referee Jeff Rexrode calls for a stop to the action. One minute, 30 seconds into round number two. Declaring your winner by tap out due to a rear naked show, Cody Steele. Cody Steele, first ever. Fury FC Challenger Series main event winner. I have a feeling we'll have a lot more. Let's go inside. Broadcast here. Cody still want to bring you in. You have a lot of people to pay to see tonight. You're making your way through this thing pretty quick. Talk to us about this victory, what it means to you. Good work, good work. So what's next for you in this division? What do you want to see? Who do you want to fight? Man, I just made it down to 155. Uh, I'm gonna see what the boss man Eric wants me to do, but man, I'm gonna rack up highlight reels and I'm gonna display that shit. <laughs> you heard it from Cody Steele. Make some noise for your winner, Cody Steele. All right. Congratulations to Cody Steele and all of the That's winners. Bring the main card to a conclusion. We're gonna take a brief break and then we got five championship swing bouts coming your way momentarily. Don't go anywhere. Sure. 